It's the thrill of deep powder skiing in remote mountains and an experience to be shared. So too is the colorful and lively lifestyle of the world's great resorts. Not many would try extreme skiing, but these brave young people search the world for the toughest places. Celebrities mixed with the millions who have found the mountains of winter. They're all involved in a common love affair. And there are those who actually thrive on speeds of 80 miles per hour, knowing one slip can mean serious injury. Yes, it's a sport with many faces. And you meet them here on Skiing's weekly magazine program. ESPN presents Subaru Ski World with Bob Biani. This week on Subaru Ski World, we take a look at the art of slalom racing through the eyes of the competitor to find out what it takes to win a World Cup. And we visit with the Aspen Highland Ski Patrol, which has a weekly ritual of jumping over a deck. And we meet U.S. ski team member Eva Twardoken, who captured second place at the giant slalom event in Europe two weeks ago. Subaru Ski World is brought to you by Subaru, the official car of the U.S. ski team. And by Visa, the official card and traveler's check of the U.S. ski team. Visa, it's everywhere you want to be. And now, from Aspen Highlands, Colorado, here's your host, Bob Biatti. Aspen Highlands is the other ski mountain located in the Aspen area. Aspen Mountain, Buttermilk and Snowmass are all owned by the Aspen Ski Company and are well known throughout the world. Aspen Highlands is independently owned and operated by Whip Jones and his son Rick. It should not be so short, it's a sleeper. I love skiing the Highlands, best runs. Huh? Not too many people around, you have the slopes for yourself. Great, sit here grabbing the sun. Meets Columbia, <laughs> South Carolina. <laughs> I'm having a great time, everybody needs to come ski Highlands. Highlands caters to locals and is a big favorite. It enjoys some outstanding skiing. Fridays are reserved for mogul competitions and ski patrolmen perform as well. Riding up the lift on a beautiful day is an experience by itself. Hey, it's Friday at Aspen Islands and all the locals are out in force. This is the big day of the week. They come all the way from Vail, Colorado, and Breckenridge, Colorado for the mogul competition. It's pretty wild, and also the ski patrol. We're going to see them a little bit later. Jumping over the house up here at the top. But right now, let's learn just a little bit more about the mogul competition here. It's fun at Aspen Highlands. Here at Aspen Highlands, Fridays are rough. Note this is no time to sit back and reflect on the week because for 18 years, Friday marks the day for the Rolling Stone Pro Freestyle Series competition. This weekly event has become so popular and so widely known that people from all over North America make it a point to come here. Some are even hardy enough to compete. The freestyle is just what it says, anything goes. You can do any kind of tricks you want or anything like that. Uh, I was probably drawing competitors that are uh, brave, I'd say. Oh, Aspen Highlands is definitely an Ironman contest with the long run that people see behind us. And uh, the kickers at the end makes it definitely an Ironman contest. Tough one to keep coming back to every week. <laughs> I wouldn't do it. <laughs> I'd walk down it, but I wouldn't ski down it. Looks good. <laughs> Probably the biggest job is building the seven foot jumps. We do that with a snow cat and then uh, cut them out by hand afterwards. These seven foot high jumps are good for about 25 feet in altitude and 35 feet in distance. The Stone Pro Freestyle Series is one of the most physically grueling events you can imagine. The toll it can take on your body is unbelievable, but its allure is in its difficulty. That's what makes it fun. I think I can. I got a few more years left in me. As long as it's fun, I'm going to keep coming back. It gets too serious, you know, and it becomes you lose the excitement out of it. I won't come.
Welcome back to Subaru Ski World with Bob Biatti. It will come as no surprise that snowboarding is catching on at ski areas everywhere. It's a sport that has special appeal for the younger set, and some enthusiasts are very young. Jason Smith just began snowboarding at age seven. Getting him interested in the sport was easy. Getting the equipment was a bit of a challenge, though. Ski World spoke with Jason and his dad, Bob, at Aspen Highlands. Well, Jason was just, has a brother that's 13 that was snowboarding, and he wanted to get into snowboarding. The problem we had was getting him a board small enough so he could really work. And uh, we found this board in Denver and put Jason on it and let him have a, a few snowboard lessons, and he caught on pretty quickly. And ever since then, I have a hard time getting him on skis now. All he wants to do is shred. I do a lot of jumps and wheelies, even though sometimes I do wheelies way too far back, I fall backwards. I had a nice ski instructor teacher that helped me learn how, and that's how I got really good. Totally tubular. Maybe next year I might start to race. Can't deny it until you try it. A lot of kids are coming into skiing these days because of snowboarding. It's fun and a lot of older people too. But one thing a lot of people aren't doing is what we're seeing right behind me. It's the Ski Patrol here at Aspen Highlands. They do it every Friday, weather permitting, jumping over this deck. It's quite an experience. Ever since the small Colorado ski resort of Aspen Highlands opened 30 years ago, organizers have had to offer visitors a little extra just to keep up with the big competitors up the road. The Aspen Highlands ski area is known for its vertical rise, the highest in Colorado. It's also known for its daring ski patrol. Members of the patrol put on a spectacular show that they have become famous for. There's no other ski patrol like them in the world. As skiers and guests gather near the top of the mountain at the Cloud Nine Picnic Hut, the ski patrol flies over the restaurant's 54-foot wide deck. There is some danger involved, but uh, we oversee the jump. Myself, I'm in charge of the jump program up there. And we make sure everything's just right, everything's just safe for, to pull it off with uh, no injuries. It takes a lot of preparation to make the jump. Every day, ski patrol members examine the jump and carefully rehearse every movement before reaching the top. But the practice, basically, you just go over and you hope for the best. And if you're in trouble, you close your eyes and wait for the impact. All right, go for it. anywhere between 30 and 40 miles an hour, anything less than 30 miles an hour, and you're not going to have enough distance to clear the 50-foot wood deck that we jump over. These patrol members, who may appear to be throwing caution to the wind for the cloud-pleasing show, are the same people who rescue lost skiers, carry injured people down mountains, and routinely patrol for avalanches. One of the most impressive jumps involves what appears to be impossible. A skier pulling a 75-pound toboggan. The Aspen Highlands Ski Patrol Jump, a tradition at Aspen Highlands Ski Area. This is probably one of the more difficult places to ski here at Aspen Highlands. A lot of bumps, little new snow making it even more difficult. This is disabled skier Diana Golden, who is well known throughout the entire world of ski racing. Truly a great story, graduate of Dartmouth College and has just won the prestigious Flo Hyman Award. Now we were just talking about the Flo Hyman Award. <laughs> 
You're, uh, you're skiing very well. And congratulations on winning that award. You want to take your goggles up so I we can see that pretty face? <laughs> uh, the award for excellence uh, given once a year by the National Women's Sports Foundation, the highest uh, award given for women in sports. You must be very proud of that. I am very proud of it. I didn't ever believe that <laughs> that was the kind of award that would be given to me, and it was exciting. And Diana, you're going to get that award from the president on March 7th, this next week. It's, uh, like you said, uh, it's not too often that I get to go to the White House and visit the president. So. Well, as I understand it, uh, somebody else was going to give you the award, and the president said, no, 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 I want to give her this award. <laughs> yeah, Senator Packwood at the congressional ceremony said, I'd like to, but presidents have priority. Okay, let's talk a little bit about your skiing career. You don't use outriggers when you ski. A lot of disabled skiers do use outriggers, and does that make it a little more difficult? Well, the balance is the re and the recovery.